Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are still on our series on the fruit of the Spirit, and we have been talking about patience. And so I just want to uh, finish that out uh, today with just reminding you again what we said yesterday. How is patience developed? For one, Proverbs 19.11 says a man's wisdom gives him patience, and that is insight and understanding from God concerning your situation. And then second, also the knowledge of God's will can give you endurance and patience. And these both come from both the word of God, the written word, and by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to you and reveals to you the wisdom of God and the will of God. And then also the written word. And then patience we looked at is also developed by tests and trials. It's developed. It's put to the test by tests and trials so that it develops. You know, how can you build muscle physically in your body if you don't have any resistance or opposition to your muscles? So the building of muscle requires resistance and opposition to those muscles. Well, in the same way, patience, which is also called perseverance, is tested. It is developed with tests and trials because you've got to stand firm for an extended period until you receive what you're believing for. And Romans 5, 3 says, we glory in tribulation. Wow, that takes faith. Knowing that tribulation, and actually that's the word for tests. Knowing that tribulation or tests work patience. Tests work patience. And then yesterday we read James 1, verses 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, or that again is the word tests, into tests and trials. Verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. It works patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect. Remember that word means actually mature. Mature developed an entire wanting nothing. And the New English translation says not deficient in anything, not deficient in anything. Let me read that same passage out of the NIV. James 1 verses 2 through 4 in the NIV say, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. You see, I said that uh, a lot of the modern translations use the word perseverance instead of patience because they're the same. They're same Greek word. Patience, perseverance are the same. That the testing of your faith develops perseverance or patience, perseverance. Verse four, perseverance, King James says patience, must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I remember in my life, especially when I was waiting for God to open the door for me to go to the mission field, I waited years and years and I was waiting and persevering and dreaming, expecting to fulfill my calling on the mission field. And in those years of waiting until God opened the door and sent me, I would read these scriptures and it would really encourage me especially verse four perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And I said, Lord, I don't want to lack anything. 
And as the New English said, I don't want to being deficient, not deficient in anything. And I said, Lord, I really don't want to go to the mission field being deficient. You know, you cannot stand up under even greater hardships when you are deficient, especially if you're having a hard time standing in easier circumstances, it would be even more difficult in more trying circumstances. So I said, this really encouraged me to be patient because I knew I didn't want to get there to the mission field being deficient, lacking anything in my life that I would need to be able to stand firm and and do what God called me to do there. So I would read these perseverance and patience must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking or not deficient in anything and said, okay, Lord, I know this is taking time. I'm waiting, but I don't want to be deficient. I don't want to be lacking anything when I get there. So let it work. Let it work. Let patience work. Let perseverance work. Let your word work in me. So I am mature and complete, not lacking or deficient in anything when I, when I am released to do what you called me to do. And you know, there are probably a lot of you listening. You're waiting for God to open doors for you to do something. It could be ministry. It could be something else. But guess what? God is not going to put you into a situation if you're not ready for it. I mean, that could be marriage. Maybe you're waiting to get married. But if you're not really ready for it, you think you are, but God knows you're not. He's not going to release you to do it. It's the same thing with a ministry thing or other types of uh, anything that you would, might be waiting for and thinking you're, you're waiting on God. Most of the time when we think we're waiting on God, God is waiting on us. Most of the time, God is waiting on us. And some of the time, God is actually waiting on other people to get in place, position and be ready for us. So it sometimes isn't just us that he's waiting for, but he's waiting for the other people also to get in their place to fulfill the plan. And so we do need to just remember to stand strong, stand firm. Don't lose expectation or anticipation. That is hope. But be constant and be strong, steadfast and enduring, knowing that you are being developed and so that you will not be deficient in anything and that Whatever it is you're waiting for, if it involves other people, God is also working in them to get them to the right place for you so that we can think of that and be patient while we are waiting for God's promises to be fulfilled in our lives. And so let me say it like this. It takes faith to be patient. You've got to continue believing God that what he said is true. That's faith. Believing that what God said is true. So as long as you continue to believe God is true and his word is true, then that is faith. So it takes faith to be patient. But then it takes patience to carry your faith for what you're believing for until the end, until you reach the goal and receive. So it takes patience to carry your faith. And faith comes by hearing the word of God, Romans ten seventeen. But also patience then will come by the word of God. As we said, it comes by wisdom and God's word is wisdom. It comes by the knowledge of his will. God's word is the knowledge of his will. So hearing the word of God, the, the written word, and the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. These will encourage you as you continue on in your journey to encourage you to remain strong, keep standing, which is patience, being strengthened by the word. 
the word of God will actually strengthen not only your faith, but then also your patience. Amen. And then there are just some exhortations in the word of God to be patient. Let me read these to you to exhort you be patient. Romans twelve twelve says, be joyful in hope. That's expectation. That's where your happy anticipation and excited expectation comes in. That's hope. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction. There again, that would be tests and trials. And then also faithful, be faithful in prayer. And then first Thessalonians five verses 12 through 14 say, now we ask you brothers to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord and who admonish you. Verse 13, hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. Verse 14, and we urge you brothers, warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak and be patient with everyone. There it is. Be patient with everyone. And then Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews 12 verses one through four. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Now, who is the cloud of witnesses? It's all the people named in chapter 11 of Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Some of us call that the hall of fame of faith, the faith heroes of the Bible, the hall of fame of faith. You see, the Bible was not written with chapters and verses with breaks for chapter and verse. Those were added later for reference. So when it talks about such a great cloud of witnesses, it's referring to the people that were just named in chapter 11. So these are all the great heroes of our faith that are named in chapter 11. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders. Another translation says every weight that besets or hinders us or slows us down. Get rid of weights in your life. Get rid of things that slow you down and weigh you down. And the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with patience or perseverance. Run with patience. Run with perseverance. That is pressing through to the goal. Run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. Verse two, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter and developer and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy set before him. What was the joy that the Lord had? Jesus it was you and me being born again. It was many sons being brought to the father. We are the joy that was set before him. Hallelujah. Jesus could see ahead of time in ahead in time and see you. He saw you and he rejoiced in you that you would be saved. God rejoiced in seeing you. I mean, Jesus rejoiced. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter, developer, finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him, you rejoicing in you. He endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse three, consider him who endured the such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You see, 
Losing heart is losing patience and perseverance so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So you will not lose your perseverance. Verse four in your struggle against sin. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. So Jesus did shed his blood and he endured the cross. Consider him and all that he endured and suffered so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. But back to verse one, run the race with perseverance, run with perseverance, the race marked out for you. You know, I want you to know this. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. If you had a question or a doubt about that this morning or yesterday, Am I going to make it? Are we going to make it through? I'm telling you, this is God's answer to you. Yes, you are going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. And I believe everyone listening to this radio program, I believe everyone who studies the word is going to finish the race and break the ribbon at the end of the race. You're going to make it. You're going to make it all the way to the end. I I know I am. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it through this year, through next year, through the rest of my life on earth. And I'm going to make it all the way. I'm going to go to the end. I'm going to reach the finish line. I'm going to reach the goal and get the prize. And you are too. You need to believe that. Be encouraged in that. You are going to win this race. You are going to finish and reach the end. Break the ribbon at the end of the line and get the prize. You're going to win. You're going to win. I want you to say that with me. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm a winner. Amen. You are a winner. You're a winner when you don't give up. That's why I've said that so many times. The only way to lose is to quit and give up. But if you don't give up, you win. You always win. So keep standing firm. And even, let me say this. Let me add this. Even if you were to leave this life and your body dies without receiving the promise, guess what? You still win. Woo! You still win. If you're born again, if you're born again, you're going to heaven and you're going to get all the prizes there. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Cast all your anxieties on the Lord. Don't worry about it. Even if you were to breathe your last breath on this earth and not get the promise that you've waited for, you're going to get it. You're still going to win. You're still going to get that promise in heaven. But you don't have to wait till heaven because you can receive now as you believe in faith. And don't quit. Keep your hope and expectation alive and your patience. You will receive the promise. Hallelujah. We are winners. There's no way around it. We are winners. We are winners. If you're born again, you are a winner. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if you're not born again, you just need to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart right now to be your personal Lord and Savior. Just pray this prayer right now. Say, dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to please forgive me of my sins. I receive you now in Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now you are born again. Now that means you have a new life in Christ Jesus. Your spirit inside you has been born again and you are a child of God and you receive all the rights and privileges and inheritance of a child of God. Glory to God. And let me share one more scripture. James chapter five verses seven and eight. Be patient then brothers. Until the Lord's coming. So we have to be patient until the Lord comes. That may be a day, a week, a month, a year, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. It may not happen in your lifetime. But that just means you continue to be patient until he comes. 
or until you breathe your last, whichever comes first. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm. Be patient and stand firm. Be patient. I want you to say that with me. Be patient and stand firm. Be patient and stand firm. And then say it again. I am a winner. I am a winner. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm an overcomer. I'm reaching the end. I'm going to reach the goal. I'm going to reach the prize. I'm going to receive the prize. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why? Because the Lord's coming is near. Because no matter what happens, we win. We win no matter what happens. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are a winner. God has victory in store for you. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. First John 5, 4. And Romans 8, 37, we are more than conquerors. You're not just a conqueror. No, not just a conqueror. You are more than, more than a conqueror through him who loved us. Romans 8, 37. And 1 Corinthians 15, 57 But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ and 2 Corinthians 2, 14. But thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. He always causes us to triumph in Christ. Christ Jesus. You are more than a conqueror. You are a winner. You are victorious. And I want to encourage you today with that. I want to pray for you right now. Father God, I ask that your Holy Spirit encourages, strengthens, and comforts everyone who is listening to my voice right now in Jesus name. I speak comfort to your heart and mind. I speak encouragement to your heart and mind. You are not going under. You're going over. You're not going down. You're going up and on top. God is giving you the victory. Don't quit. Don't give up hope. God is working for you today in your situation. Things that you don't see and things you don't know. God is working behind the scenes. God is working Behind the scenes, in situations, in in your situation, in ways that you cannot see and that you don't know. But be patient because you will soon see that victory. You will soon see that breakthrough that you have been believing God for. I declare to you today by the spirit of God that your breakthrough is on its way And it's just at the door. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you that you are encouraging and strengthening every person listening to me. Speak peace to their heart. Speak joy to their heart. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Empower them and strengthen them by the joy of the Lord. The joy is their strength. And undergird their faith. Help them to rise up as on wings like an eagle. But Lord, it's actually on your word and on your spirit. We rise up and we are strengthened by your promises, by your word, by your faithfulness. Father God, because you never fail, you have never failed us before. And you're not going to start today. Today is not the beginning of you failing us. No, you will never fail us. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. You will never cease to be faithful to your children. So, Father, I pray for those who are in difficult physical conditions, um, home conditions. I'm thinking 
difficult home relationships. Father, I pray that the spirit of God move in that home in Jesus name. I take authority over the spirit of strife. I take authority over the spirit of, of violence. I take authority over the spirit of anger. In Jesus' name, I cast it down. I break its power. I cast it out in Jesus' name. Now, if that's in your home, you need to say the same thing. You say, I take that. There is no more anger, no more violence, no more strife in my home in Jesus' name. And then you call for the peace and you release the peace of God. We speak peace into every home. We speak peace into every home today in Jesus name. And I speak joy to every heart in Jesus name. I speak encouragement to everyone's faith in Jesus name. Amen. And Father, I thank you for just breakthroughs working in their lives as well in in every area, finances, physical healings, and in all areas. Father God, I call for new jobs to break through for those who need jobs. Jobs to break through for those who need jobs. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You take it. You say you believe. You receive it. You claim it. Lay hold on it. And then write to me with your testimony. I want to hear your testimony. I want you to tell me your victory and your breakthrough that you got your answers that you believed God for. I want to hear from you. Write to me at victoriousfaith.co. Info at victoriousfaith.co or by postal mail at Victorious Faith, P.O. Box 509, East Lake, Colorado, 80614. Now join me again tomorrow and remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.